This instructional video will be talking about analog inputs, or specifically how we can interface various analog sensors and devices with a microcontroller. Now before we do that, we should discuss how a microcontroller fits into the world. So here we have our microcontroller in the middle, which is in this case, in this subject, we're using a Arduino. And that's completely digital. Everything the Arduino does is all in the digital domain, a whole series of ones and zeros. The thing is, the real world is analog, not digital at all. And so on the left, we have our physical variables, uh, things that we can measure, things like sound, light, pressure, temperature. There's a whole lot of different physical variables that we could measure. And what we use is something called a transducer, or often used called a sensor as well. And this essentially converts these physical variables into analog voltages. For example, if we were trying to measure sound, our transducer would be a microphone. If we were trying to measure light, our transducer would be a photodiode or an LDR or something like that. Uh, pressure, we've got various pressure sensors and temperature sensors as well. And so this transducer will produce some sort of an analog voltage. Then we need to use something called an analog to digital converter which will essentially convert this analog voltage into a number. And that's all we'll be talking about in detail today. On the flip side, we often want to generate things with an analog voltage output from our microcontroller, or our Arduino in this case. To do that, we use a digital to analog converter. And if you have a look in the pulse width modulated video, I'll discuss this in a little bit of detail. And this will generally drive some sort of an actuator. Uh, for example, sound, uh, our actuator would be a speaker to generate sound. Uh, light, it would be a, a light globe or something like that that we can dim. All sorts of physical control variables that we can control with various actuators there. So now let's look in detail at how we use analog to digital converters or ADCs. Essentially what we're doing is measuring some sort of an analog voltage and trying to provide a digital representation of this via a number, a binary number. It's a bit like if you've used a digital multimeter, a digital multimeter will tell you where the voltage is and might tell you it's 3.12 volts or something like that. But it's inside your microcontroller and it will tell your microcontroller this particular voltage. In our Arduinos we actually have these internal and We've set it up so that we can measure four different signals, four different things that we can actually measure. Now there's lots of different techniques at a hardware level of how this is actually done. In a second year subject, our microcontroller subject, we actually cover these in detail and look at what happens inside and how they actually work. But essentially they do something which is called quantization. So they're converting a continuous number into a discrete digital number. And that discrete digital number has a certain number of bits. Now our Arduinos have 10 bits. So it's a 10-bit analog to digital converter. Which means, if we say 2 to the power of 10, we've got 1,024 different voltage levels, uh, which are values that are returned from 0 through to 1,023. Now these levels correspond to 0 to 5 volts. So if we got a 0, we expect to get 0 volts, if we got approximately 512, we expect about 2.5 volts. And if we got 1023, we'd expect about 5 volts to be our input signal. Now if we say 5 volts divided by 1023, because we've got 1023 different steps, we can say that we have 4.89 millivolts per step. So if we increase from one step to the next step, maybe 521 to 522 will have an increase of 4.89 millivolts, which causes that increase in the next step. So on our Arduino, we have four analog inputs. These are the ones on the power side of the board, and they're marked analog 0 through to 3. Uh, analog inputs can be connected to all of these at the same time, but we can only read from one at a time. So what we might do is read one, and then read the next one, and then read the next one, and so on. Analog inputs don't need to be set up in a setup function, and all we need to do to read them is use the analog read command. So we say analog read, the pin number that we want to read from, between 1 and 3, and this returns a result. Um, 
whatever the result happens to be between 0 and 1023. Now there's lots of different sensors that we might want to connect up to our Arduino. Uh, here's a few different sensors or analog inputs that we could provide. If you wanted to measure acceleration, you've got these sort of sensors in your iPhones or Android phones. They allow you to play games and things by moving your phone about. You use an accelerometer, so we have sensors for that. We have pressure sensors as well. Uh, if we want to measure temperature, very common in thermostats and things have a little temperature sensor there. Uh, for those doing the strain gauge project, major project at the end, uh, we have strain gauges and you'll be connecting up strain gauges to your Arduino. Now we can measure strain on various beams and objects. We can use LDRs and measure light. So little light sensors, we'll be doing that in the lab. And if we use something called a variable resistor or a potentiometer, we can actually have a little knob that we can control the analog voltage that's being passed into this Arduino. Uh, we use these all the time, everything from volume controls to uh, tuning controls on stereo systems and things like that. Let's see an example of our analog read in practice. We'll connect a potentiometer or a variable resistor up to our analog input pin uh, number two. We've got pins zero through to three that are available to us. And we'll declare a variable that will hold the result of our ADC measurement. Now, so that we can see what the actual measurement values are, we're going to set up our serial port and send them out to our computer. Now, in this main loop, what we're going to do is first we'll take a measurement. Then we'll print the measurement to the computer or send the measurement to the computer. And then we'll do a delay so we don't do this too quickly to overload our computer with all these serial measurements. Let's now upload this onto our Arduino device. So now that it's uploaded, we can open the serial monitor and we'll see the data that's being sent from the Arduino to our computer. Currently zero. So I turn the potentiometer, we have that increasing and increasing, increasing, increasing until we get to the very end of there, which is our maximum value, 1023. So we have between zero and 1023 as I turn the potentiometer.